Lads, we be sailing the seven seas together. Today, we be plundering some booty. Today, we raid the shipyard and take more and brawn out to sea along with Jord, Elise, Blackbeard be the name, and plundering patrols be the game. As you could tell from our lovely intro there, we're doing something with pirates. This was voted on by you guys in our community tab and in the Discord. So if you're a member of our Discord server, thank you so much. Uh, we are back and it took me a few weeks. We've had a lot going on and I wanted to finally get this deck profile out. So this is Plunder Patrol and we be plundering some booty. We be going from the shipyard to the boats. I love this deck. This deck is so much fun. Lucas and I have tinkered with this deck a lot over the past couple of years. Uh, it's been a deck that's a kind of like a team favorite. So, uh, like Goki was back in the day, Plunder Patrol has taken our hearts and sailed the seven seas. But let's go into the deck profile, explain our card choices, why we are playing certain cards, what they kind of do, so you can learn how to play Plunder Patrol too. All right, let's get right into it. Starting off with three copies of White Beard, the Plunder Patrol Helm. So the Helmsman steers the ship, and this card steers the whole deck. White Beard, the Plunder Patrol Helm. Uh, during your opponent's turn, as a quick effect, you can special summon one Plunder Patrol monster from your extra deck with the same attribute as a monster that's on their field or in their graveyard, equipping this card to it as uh, an effect. If this card is sent from your hand or field to the graveyard, you are able to special summon a Plunder Patrol monster from your deck to your side of the field. However, you are locked into Plunder Patrols for the rest of the turn. Does that matter? No. Three copies of Golden Hair, the newest Plunder Patrol. And like all rookies on a ship, you're gonna be given one job, which is to clean up the other issues. And Golden Hair cleans up a lot of issues for this, this deck because it can send a mo another Plunder Patrol monster card from your hand to the graveyard or face up on the field uh, to the graveyard to special summon this card from your hand. And if it's in the graveyard, you get to discard any card from your hand to special summon it. The benefit to these two is that they are the tuners of the deck. Um, with its 2,000 booty, it may not be dealing a lot of damage, but it will definitely sweep away the competition, allowing you to sail the seas clean. Next is three copies of Bluebeard, the Plunder Patrol Shipwright. The Shipwright on a ship will fix the ship. will make sure that the ship is in tip-top shape and ready to sail the seas, and Plunder Patro uh, Bluebeard is great at that. First, it can special summon itself while you control a Plunder Patrol monster. And if it's sent from the hand or field to the graveyard, you get to discard a card to draw a card. You get to fix your hand with the shipwright, which is an incredible thing. Next up on every good ship, you need your sea guide. And for this deck, we have Black Eyes, the Plunder Patrol sea guide. The sea guide knows where you're trying to go and helps you reset things and be prepared for the coming adventure. So with blue, with black eyes, the first thing you get is you get to target a plunder patrol card in your monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand to special summon itself, which is really strong. But the other effect and the secret effect is when it's sent from the uh, monster zone or hand to the graveyard, you can target a plunder patrol monster that is equipped to one of your other monsters and special summon it. It's a really powerful effect and black eyes being the extra extender, so you've got six extenders in the, in the main deck is really strong. We also have two copies of Redbeard, the Plunder Patrol Matey. The Matey is kind of like the first mate. He does something similar to what the captain does, we'll get to that in a little bit, uh, that he is able to equip himself to a, a Plunder Patrol monster that you'll special summon from the extra deck with the same attribute as a monster your opponent controls or that's in their graveyard. But when it's sent from the hand or uh, hand or field monster zone to the graveyard, you are able to equip him to another Plunder Patrol, giving you that equipping is kind of a big part of this strategy. Next up for the Plunder Patrol cards, we have three copies of the Shipyard. Uh, we have the Shipyard here because you need to search your stuff. So uh, first off, 
All Plunder Patrol monsters you control gain 500 attack for each Plunder Patrol card in your Spell and Trap card zone. It's really easy to get a lot of them. Uh, you can discard a card to add a Plunder Patrol card from your deck to your hand, except itself. And then if it's sent to the graveyard, you can target a Plunder Patrol card in your Spell and Trap card zone, set this card, and then return that target to the hand. So you can bounce things back from your Spell and Trap card zone back to your hand with this card's effect when it's sent to the graveyard. The last card is Booty. All pirates are after treasure, and booty be getting you there in the fine ways. Uh, first off, you can target, you can declare an attribute and target a face-up monster that your opponent controls. It becomes that attribute until the end of this turn. Uh, then you can also uh, you can take a plunder patrol monster from your graveyard and either add it to your, shuffle it into your deck or special summon it. Uh, so it just kind of gives you a permanent monster reborn that you can activate every turn and also gives you the choice of what attributes you want your opponent to have so that you can summon your monsters. Uh, and that we'll deal with in the extra deck in a little bit. That's it for the plunders. Now pirates, pirates don't fight fair. They're pirates. So in this deck, we are playing a bunch of kaijus. A bunch of kaijus. We're playing five kaijus. Jizakira, Dogaron, Radian, Kumungus, and Gamaseal. We are playing these ones specifically for their attributes. Light, fire, dark, earth, and water. Water because it kind of goes with everything and it's the weakest one, so it's easy to out. Earth, dark, fire, and light are there to deal with problematic monsters. Uh, and also because it lets you sur summon certain cards out of the extra deck, which again, we're going to get to in a little bit. Uh, we're also playing two copies of Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. These are excellent in helping you break a board. We wanted to build this, uh, we built this deck specifically to be able to break a board pretty efficiently. Uh, but when it needs to go first, it's got its options. But the Kaiju Slumber is just breaking your opponent's board very efficiently are incredibly helpful. Next up, Dipsy Fiend, the TCG exclusive. So, Dipsy Fiend. You can discard a card and declare an attribute except water, and you'll special summon this card from your hand to either field. Then, this card becomes that attribute until the end of the turn. Uh, if you special summon this card to your opponent's field, you can special summon one level four or lower fiend monster with, uh, with an original attribute other than the declared attribute from your hand or graveyard to your field, um, but for the rest of the turn, you can't special summon except for from the extra deck except fiend monsters. You will see that that doesn't matter. This being a level four is cool, but the fact that you can give it to your opponent, which will turn off things like infinite and permanence, is really strong, and it becomes the attribute that you need, which allows you to do a lot more plays going first. So your side deck can be kind of transformative in you get rid of all of your going second cards and you can put in a bunch of counter traps or control cards or what have you and really just make your opponent's life a pain. And finally, the going second cards continued. Um, so we're running three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Forehead. Uh, three copies of Forbidden Droplet. Because this card sends cards from the uh, cards from the hand to the graveyard, you can actually use this to break a board if you have a bunch of plunders in hand because it'll trigger all the plunders effects in the new chain. So Forbidden Droplet can clear a board by itself uh, with a bunch of plunders in hand. So, you know, that's why we play it. Uh, we're playing two copies of Talent. It's Talent. Uh, your opponent's going to activate monster effects during your turn, especially if you're going second. Two copies of Lightning Storm, specifically there to kind of deal with back row, as is Twin Twisters. Twin Twisters is better in a lot of instances when you're playing back row decks, only because the discard will trigger the Plunder Patrols. That's going to do it for the main deck. Let's go ahead and jump into the extra. All right, into the extra, we've got three copies of Blackbeard, the Plunder Patrol Captain. Like every good pirate crew, you have to have your captain. And while my captain might still be Lu Monkey D. Luffy, for the plunders, they have to use Luffy's polar opposite in Blackbeard. Uh, Blackbeard, the Plunder Patrol captain, is, as a quick effect, able to target one effect monster you control to special summon a Plunder Patrol monster from your extra deck with an attribute the same as a monster your opponent controls or that's in their graveyard. And then if this card is used, you get to draw a card, which is pretty neat. So Blackbeard is there kind of to like set the tempo. And now you get to choose which boat you wish to sail away on. So we've got two copies of Lease. Uh, Lease is an Omni Negate. It is the only one of the ships that's always a quick effect. Uh, but while it's equipped with a monster, um, you get to search. 
So they all have this effect. So Plunder Patrol Ship Lease, when your opponent activates a monster effect, uh, you can discard a Plunder Patrol card, negate the activation, and if you do destroy it, then if this card is equipped with a Plunder Patrol card, you get to add a Plunder Patrol card from your deck to your hand. This can kind of set the pace for the entire turn, which is really cool. Uh, you can also special summon a monster from the Spell and Trap card zone, a Plunder Patrol, to the field. So you can go Blackbeard, summon Lease, draw a card, put the Blackbeard back, do it again during your opponent's turn. Um, so Lease is really, really good. It's definitely the best one. Next up is two copies of Brawn. Uh, especially with all the fire decks, Brawn is really, really good. So Brawn, uh, all of the Fiend monsters gain 500 attack. You can, uh, then you can discard one Plunder Patrol card and target a spell and tra or, or trap your opponent controls to banish it. Uh, then you can add a Plunder Patrol uh, monster from your deck to your hand, but this becomes a quick effect when it's equipped. So this deals with spells and traps and lets you add a monster. And then we've got two copies of Mork. Uh, Mork banishes a monster, targets and banishes a monster, and then adds a spell or trap. Um, and these will add the field spell and stuff. And these are both quick effects if they're equipped, which is pretty easy to do. One copy of Plunder Patrol Ship Jord. Uh, Jord, if your opponent special summons a monster, like, so the big thing here is that you can kind of give them whatever you want with this and reset your turn. Uh, and you can re-add Whitebeard or Black Eyes or whatever. This card is insane. It is part of a lot of the standard combos that you'll want to do, but you only need one of it. It's not that like commonly summoned, and it's really not that good otherwise outside of that standard combo line. Uh, so that's going to do it for your ships. Next up, we have one Necro Quip Princess. Uh, you have a lot of Fiend monsters that equip. It's really easy to make. One Baguska and one Typhon. These are fiends, they're big, they're, cr well, one's big, one's annoying, they're necessary, you gotta play them. And last up is the Underworld Goddess combo. Uh, with the Kaijus, there's ways where you can just use this to clean up the board by summoning it. It can be, like, you just put the Kaiju in the zone it points to, you'll use one of their other monsters plus a card this points to and make Underworld Goddess. Um, with just basically two of your monsters, which is really nice. But that's gonna do it for my Plunder Patrol deck profile. This deck, like I said, is a blast. It is so much fun to play. I really, really recommend it. If you wanna have a really good time sailing the high seas and pillaging villages and having a good, good old time with your crew, this is the best deck for you. All right, lads, this is my favorite TCG exclusive archetype. I hope you enjoyed. Smash that like button if you haven't already subscribe if you haven't already join the discord in the link below uh we back baby we sail in the seas together and we're ready to take off so till next time lads good fun have luck